Hi there. Let's go over the answers to the topic two, which is mostly about mostly about telescopes. Uh, first, I want you to describe what a telescope is, and so it's a device used to magnify objects at great distances. And then they want you to be able to explain objective and ocular lens. The objective lens is the large lens, usually at the front of the telescope and the ocular is the eyepiece so if this was the telescope in general the eyepiece is here where your eye goes and of course objective lenses somewhere there who invented the telescope Hans Lippershe and then who improved the telescope and what did his observations show? Well, it was Galileo who improved the telescope and this showed details of objects that required new ex exclamations, explanations. Sorry. And what model of the universe did Galileo's observations support? So the telescope and Galileo's observations helped to support the sun or helio centric model. The Earth goes around the Sun. Uh, number six, what is resolving power? Uh, this has to do with the fineness of detail that a telescope can produce. And what's the difference between a refracting and a reflecting? Refracting from our grade 8 science on light means to bend light. And so refracting telescopes use lenses for the objectives and they bend the light. So inside a telescope are a series of lenses. The light comes in, it's bent, and then it is bent again, and so on. Uh, reflecting uses mirrors to change the direction of light. So objective lenses using mirrors. Uh, what are some advantages of each type? Refracting or bending light gives better quality images uh, than an equal sized reflector. Reflecting though can be made larger. So a reflecting telescope can be much larger, but it's not as fine details. Lower reflecting telescopes produce lower quality images. Uh, what was the problem with Copernicus' model of the universe? Uh, Copernicus, who if you remember came up with the heliocentric model, So he put the sun at the center and the planets went around the sun like this. However, the problem was this. He still couldn't explain why in one given night sometimes it appeared that one planet moved in retrograde, which means it seemed to move backwards compared to another planet. So he tried to call these epicycles, which means as the planet goes around the sun it does a little circle which wasn't true. So who found the answer to this and what was the answer? Kepler came up with the answer and he realized that planets go around the sun, here's our sun, and they go around it and the sun isn't at the center and so planets like Mercury go in an elliptical, so kind of an egg-shaped orbit and here's the sun. And so they change speeds as they go closer to the sun they speed up and as they're farther away from the sun over here they slow down and so what that means then is it appears that sometimes a planet is moving backwards compared to another in the sky due to the speeding up as it's closer and the slowing down motion in this elliptical orbit. What is the universal gravitation and who was the first to come up with this? And so 
There's gravitational forces between all objects that pull them together. Isaac Newton stated this and it helped explain elliptical orbits. So the pull of gravity in an elliptical orbit is stronger here, which whips it around faster. The pull of gravity when a planet is way over here is weaker and causes it to go at a slower motion. And that's a quick overview of topic two.